So tomorrow, here's what's happening. I'm on a hiring committee for uh, the dean of the LTRC, which is the Tech Mall, uh, plus the dean would oversee tutoring and the like. So we, I'm not going to talk too much about that because you're all like, okay, whatever. Uh, but what that means is what was supposed to happen was we were supposed to have interviews tomorrow and Wednesday starting like 11 or something and I was going to let us out early no problem what it's morphed into is all of the interviews are tomorrow from 8 30 to 4. so no class tomorrow right we're not going to have class tomorrow I try to get a sub but nobody can sub um, not all my colleagues can teach stats and all the stats people are otherwise busy so I'm like okay we'll have a day off so sorry I know you guys are already sick. Um, <laughs> and of course, so that means we're going to have two Tuesdays off in a row because next Tuesday is 4th of July. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I will think about, we'll see. We'll see how things go. I might push the test back by day. I haven't made my decision yet on that. We'll see. Okay. Um, so any questions on that? So I'll send them an email reminder uh, just because I know some people uh, take the bus and so forth, and if they don't hear that tomorrow's a day off, that would suck major. They get here, I'm like, oh, shit. Especially with a strike. Anybody riding the bus or there's a strike still going on? Is that true? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's sort of like not in the news as much right now because it's kind of gotten old, but for people taking the bus, you're like, it's not old. Uh, so I'm sorry if that's the situation you're in. Hopefully that resolves soon. Uh, so now you know. Don't come to school tomorrow unless you got something else. Um, so today we're going to get into uh, chapter four. Somebody just said, if there's no questions left over. Okay. Um, I, we're about to get into um, what I kind of hinted at about before when I was talking about a shortcut. Remember when we talked about the probability of at least one thing? So I, if I have 20 people, how many ways is there for me to pick at least one of them? Um, no, 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 no. Like That's how many to pick one of them. Two, I said how many five. ways can you pick at least one? So there's 20 ways to pick one person, yes? How many ways to pick two people? Think about it. Just think about it. You're not going to get the answer. But just start to think about what would that mean. I have 20 people, correct? I want to pick two of them. Could I pick the first two? Yes. How about the last two? Yes. How about the first one and the last one? How about the second one and the seventh one? All right, now start to think. Do you think that would be a pretty big number? Yes? Would that be the 20? It would be bit built off of factorials, but okay. that's 20 factorial would be way too big. Oh, okay. um, I just, I really, does everybody with me just on that basic point? That would be a stupid big number. You, and it doesn't sound like you should be. I got 20 people, I'm going to choose two of them. How many ways can I do that? You're like, that yeah, can't be that many. There's a lot. It's a lot more. Have you guys ever heard about like uh, if a pizza has, you know, like 13 topping choices? How many different pizzas can you kind of? Put together and it's in the millions yeah okay so especially if you start talking about you know half of it could be this and this and whatever then you're really getting the millions okay so here's what we're uh, that's going to be section four three that's coming up that's section four three so the very first thing we're going to do is be a little more straightforward it's going to look a little uh, familiar um, let me put this guy to sleep 4142, well, we're doing chapter four today. Yeah. The whole damn thing. Um, what's about to happen, let me turn these guys off. Thank you. Um, anytime we get a new distribution idea, what are the two most important numbers to calculate from any set of data, no matter kind of like the way they give me the data? What are the two most important numbers? Give me one of them. Five, maybe. And what's the second one? One. Maybe. 
What's the second? So the mean. Got to know where the center is, and the mean is normally the best thing for that. What's the other number I want to get? Standard deviation. Cool. So if I know where the middle is and how far the data gets away from the middle, I know a lot of shit. I know. You don't have to tell me every data point then. 800 data points just give me two numbers and I got a good feel for it. Yes? Maybe, maybe? Okay. Okay. Maybe. Um, for example, if I had one class that had a mean of, of 75 and the standard deviation is, is, is 4, versus if I had another class that had a mean of 75 and the standard deviation is, is uh, 20. Let me see if you guys get this. Which class most likely had more 80s? Think about it. Yeah. No, no, think about what you just said. This class gets away from 75. Everybody's grade got away from 75, not very far. I really want this to make sense. So one step would be 79. Two steps is 83. Three steps would be 87, yes? Three steps up is 87. Do you guys follow? Isn't three steps away? We should kind of have a feel for this. Three steps away is really damn far away. Do you guys understand what I just said? Within two steps, if it's normal, what how, what percentage is in there? Within two steps. That's one. Within two steps. 95%. And if it's not normal, within two steps is 89. I'm sorry, 75%. Within three steps is 89% of the data. So three steps away doesn't even get to 90. Whereas this one, one step away is where? Holy shit. <laughs> right? Now some of you guys might think, well, two steps away would be 115, Jeff. How could the standard range be 20? Well, because I might have had some really, really low grades, which will widen the, the average distance for the mean. Well, let me stop for a minute. This is all conceptual. This is all, but I really, we should be at the point where everything I just said makes sense. Standard deviation is the average distance from the middle. So if my standard deviation is very small, most of my data is really close to that middle. So obviously this one would more than likely have the most A's, right? Okay. Let me stop for a minute. Okay, okay. All of that was just to show you. I don't care how big the data set is, if you give me those two numbers, I have a really good feel for what the data does. I don't need to see all the numbers. I don't want to see all the numbers. Just give me a summary. The next best summary besides these two is the five number summary, which is why the name summary is in the name, but that's the best, just two numbers. Okay, okay. So, as we progress through this semester, we're gonna be given data in different ways. What's the one way we've gotten data so far? What's one way I just give you data? Seven. Just a freaking list of data, right? One, two, seven, nine, three, make the blindest means, right? That's exactly how we sound when we make the test. Here's another way I can give you data. Um, I could give you data, let's see what this means. Let's figure out what this means. <laughs> this is funny. I'm about to teach it in a way I've never taught, which is neat. I'm thinking about it on the fly. Um, so here's some data. Uh, but what does this mean? Uh, you can do it, Jeff. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. Yeah, okay. What do you think that means? In fact, let me put up here relative frequency because that's just a percentage that's what that that's like a probability but that's just a percentage right so how many data points are one how many what percentage of the people said one 12 percent right so if i ask you what is the average of the data would you just take one two three four add them up divide by four why wouldn't that work What's the heaviest weighted thing? So the average should be closer to two. It should actually be like a gravitational pull, right? I really want this to make sense. I can't just do one plus two plus three plus four because it's not an equal amount of each. So I'm about to show you the reason the math we do 
works. So everything I'm about to say is something you're never going to have to do, but it explains why what we do works. Does that make sense? We do. I do a lot of this. That's my job, basically, as a math teacher, is to show you where the hell our formulas come from. That's the number one thing I'm supposed to do. Right? So here's the idea. What the hell do we do in this situation, right? So I want, I still want to know what the mean is, and I want to know what the standard deviation is. Okay, maybe, maybe. So watch this. What if I had this list of data? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Go with me. Go with me. You're all like, it's all of you, man. Just sit here and try to go with it. Somebody tell me how to get the average. Add them all up. Add them all up. So isn't it a smart way to add them up would be like, there's two ones. Is that cool? Yeah. Plus, there's one, two, plus four threes, plus three fours, divided by ten. Is that cool? That would be the mean. We'll say this is a population. Is everybody with me? You're all like, well, yeah, Jeff, what the hell? That's the same shit, man. I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. So on the side here, uh, I'm going to put in there old way. Wouldn't this just be, let's see, 2, 4, uh, 18, uh, no, what is it? 12, 4, 16, 20. 20 over 10, is that 2, really? Is that exactly 2, 12? No, Jeff, you can't, you can't do math. 12, 24, 26, 28. Okay, that's better. 2.8. Sixteen. I don't trust myself. Twenty. Okay. No, 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 no. There's not a percentage, right? That is the mean. I love it. So of course it's between two and three. Thirty percent are threes. Twenty percent. Uh, Fifty-seven percent are twos. So it kind of makes sense. It's about two point eight. Right. That's the old way. Now, I want a shortcut way. There's got to be a shortcut way if they give me the data like this. So what we're fundamentally doing right now is just coming up with a shortcut. So watch, yeah, I'm gonna do it this way now. There's two tenths, 0.2, 20% of the data is ones. Is that cool? That's what that means. Two out of 10, so 20% are ones, plus 10% are twos, plus 40% are threes, plus 30% are fours. Yes? Mathematically, it's the same shit. So here I added the top first and then I divided. Here I divided everything first and now I'm gonna add. So math is like, whatever you wanna do, human. So what do we get? We get 0.2 plus 0.2 plus point plus 1.2 plus 1.2. 2.4, 2.6, Of course it's the same number, nothing amazing there. No David Blaine moment, right? It's the same stupid math, okay? But what that does now so I want you to realize, wouldn't this have looked like, if I gave you this data sort of like that, it would look like this. Let me see, I don't think everybody can see this. I really, really want to make sure you understand the shortcut part of this whole thing. Um, if I gave you this data like this, it would look like this. 0.2 or 1s. 0.1 or 2s, 0.4 or 3s, 0.3 or 4s. And that's the percentage of each. What do these all add up to be, of course? Yeah, 100% or 1, right? Of course, because they have to, because otherwise I'd be missing something or creating something out of thin air. Okay. So what, look at the work we did. What's the math? What does it relate to? What did I actually do? What did I actually do? Didn't I multiply each of the, what I call weights? Because remember I said the heaviest weighted thing, in this case is three, right? Okay, I like it. I just realized I was looking at this data. It was freaking me out less. But why does this make sense that this would be 2.8? Because the heaviest weighted thing is three. What would the average be if it was just one, two, three, four? What's the average of one, two, three, four? 2.5. 
right? If you average one, two, three, four, you get 2.5. Everybody with me? Why is this average 2.8? Because the heaviest weighted thing was three. And four is heavy too. So of course that pulls the average up a bit. That's why I like to think of it as weight, sort of like gravity. All right, let me stop for a minute. Everything I've discussed so far is just leading up to the math we're gonna actually do. This is all derivation. Okay. So what did I act, what does the math say to do that I can do in the list easier? Doesn't this just say take the weight times the number? Take the probability times the data value? So couldn't I just make x times p of x a column? So Nick, you start to see how you do this in list one, list two, list three, in case they give you a big ass list, you can just make the calculator do all the work, right? Which is why it costs under whatever bucks. Okay, maybe. So then if I multiply across, what do I get? I get 0.2. 1.2, 1.2, and then how did I get the average? I just, what did I do to those numbers to get the average? Add them all up. So what is the formula for the average then? What am I adding up exactly? Adding up, no? No? What did I just add up? What is that third column? It's the x's times the p of x's. So what's the formula going to be? That. So we put that up here. So they don't need you anymore, Jack. So if I'm given a probability distribution, if I'm given a probability distribution, all that means is I'm given the x's, I'm given the probability of the x's. How do I find the mean? I add up x times p of x. So let me ask you something. Let me ask you something kind of silly. Um, if I had, in a, in a hat, I had the numbers one, two, and three on pieces of paper, right? If you picked out uh, two pieces of paper, you pick paper, drop it, pick paper, what's the most likely average you would get? This is, let's see if you guys get this. Two. Two is the most likely average. Let's see if you guys, how do you get an average of one? You'd have to pick the number one twice, wouldn't you? How do you get an average of two? Either you pick two and then a two, or you pick a one and then a three, or you pick a three and then a one. It's got the most ways to do it, so it's the most likely thing. So if you take pieces of paper out, what's the expected average of all the pieces of paper? Two. So we call the expected value is another name for the average or the mean. Value. I don't know. Uh, over on the right side is a what? Average. Oh, I got something. No, you're good. I like to imagine somebody's dropped dropped because of my writing. I think that's got to be true. Sorry. Um, the reason I bring that up, I want you to notice that this is actually insane. What are the first three letters? Letters. What do they look like? The first three letters in the formula. EXP, expected value. Oh, shit. No, I'm sorry. Just a little neat coincidence. I just want to throw that out there. So you're going to see the phrase expected value pop up more and more in the near chapters. Uh, and I just want to show you, it's sort of like a key, you know, it's kind of nice. The first thing that the EXP is a little silly. Now, we know that's not the letter E, but it looks like an E to us. So that's close enough. Okay. So, how would I figure out the average of this data then? What would I have to do? Yeah, add up the probability, or just multiply. Yes, first step is to multiply across. So, 1 times 0.12 is crazily enough 0.12. Uh, 
What's twice 0.57? Uh, 1.14. Good. 3 times 0.3? 4 times 0 0.01? 0 0.04. Cool. So if we add those up, we'll get the average of these data values. Now, I really want you to understand. Remember I put up here 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4. Remember that? Right? Right? And then you just add them up, divide them out. Man. So you're like, Jeff, we already have a freaking way to calculate the average. Why do I have to memorize all this bullshit? You don't have to memorize it. You put it on the formula sheet. But why do I have to have a whole different way? Well, how many? Let me see if you guys get this. How many ones, if I wanted to make a list of data that represents this, how many ones would I have to have? If uh, you have 100 data points? Yeah, let's assume 100, because that's 12. one thing is, I don't know how many, but let's assume 100. So how many ones would I need? 12. 12. How many twos would I need? 57. 57. Do you want to make that list? Well, shit, no. Give me a shortcut, Jeff. I just did. Okay. okay. So is it 200? I don't know. Is it? Let's see. I got 1.26. Neato. All kinds of things. Uh, 1.26. Um, plus 1.26 plus 0.94. I don't know. Uh, two point. I think it's 2.2. Two, is that what you got? I got, I got 0. 0.12 plus oh. 0.14 plus 0.9 plus. Yeah, and you got 2.2. I got 2.2. So okay. I, just want to make sure. I agree with that. I can't add it. Okay. No, neither can I. It's okay. I'm not doing that. Um, why does it make sense that it's 2.2? Because again, the average of these, just by themselves, the average of one, two, three, four is 2.5. The heaviest way to think is two, which should pull the average down a little bit. 2.2, that makes sense. Okay, that's why earlier I was like, wait, that's not what I expected though. What are we doing so far? Does that match though? Have we calculated everything that somebody would wanna know? What am I still missing? Standard deviation. So we have a way to calculate the mean. And again, I could use the old way, but then I have to do 12 ones plus 57 twos. Why do that when I have this nice shortcut, right? And by the way, real quick, what was the formula for the mean? Old formula. What was the formula for the mean before? Uh, what was it? Sigma x over n. The sum of x over n. Stay with me now. Stay with me. Do you see how this formula it looks very different? And it's got the sum of x in it, doesn't it? Right? Somebody remind me what's always in the bottom of a probability? The total. The total number of things. And what does n represent? The number of total number of things. <laughs> right? <laughs> It's like ragu, it's in there. So this has the over n in it. They're the same stupid formula. It's just to calculate it, bam, I could do it quicker. I could have a little shortcut, but they are really the same formula. Okay, okay. So a lot of what I just discussed was concept. Deriving a formula, talking about why it makes sense, talking about the name, the expected value, all that kind of crap. Nuts and bolts wise, multiply across, add down. Right. Now, let's talk about standard deviation. We got any more going? Still working with this set of data. Um, what did I need for standard deviation before? Didn't I need this? And then I squared it, right? Actually, let's do let's do population. We're talking about populations here, so we'll do populations. Right, isn't that what we had to do for our standard deviation? Right? Okay, I like it. So what I would need here, let's see if this makes sense. And before, I just needed x's and then add them up, divide by how many there are to get the average, correct? But I can't, now I multiply the x times the weight and add those up. So now, instead of doing this to get the standard deviation, or the variance in this case, what I'm going to do is take these times this. Again, it's the same formula because what's on the bottom of probability? N, same formula. All right. Do you understand how much shit goes into this, though? I got to take the x's, I got to subtract the mean, then I got to square them, and then I got to multiply. Okay, that's too much shit. So here comes uh, one of the most 
algebraic intensive moments in this class. Okay. What I want you guys to help me with is can anybody so here's what I just said I want to do. Wow, you're a good one. Can you guys take a minute if you saw this in an algebra class what would you do with it? How would you simplify it? No, 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 no. If I saw this, oh. just look at this piece by itself. And I said simplify that, what would you do? Both sides. There's no two sides, there's only one thing. It's oh. not an equation. Oh. Uh, what would I do to uh, simplify that? Simplify. How do you do how do you how do you do this? How would you simplify this? Foil, right? I wish we never invented FOIL, because it's bullshit. It's just repeated distribution. FOIL makes it sound like it's more than it is. But anyway, I'll stop, I'm sorry. If you ever took algebra with me, I'd say FOIL shit. But that's Because all you do is distribute the x and distribute the three. It's just repeated distribution. I don't need some mnemonic device to help me with that. I'll stop. So what, what, how about if I had x minus five squared? Is it just x squared plus 25? No. What would I do? What square mean? Times itself. I, multi, I write it twice and I foil it out. Okay. Do it. Go ahead. Oh, wait. Foil out x minus mu squared. Or draw a duck. <laughs> you make it, so I won't know what you're doing. Preferably actually do the foiling, but. Or the duck. <laughs> or the duck. It's, or stare at me, I guess. That's another option. Let's say x minus 5 squared. Don't worry about it. That's just to, that's to get everybody's memory going. Foil this up. Just the symbol. Doesn't need anything. What I'm about, what I'm trying to do, just to make sure you guys, I'm trying to make this formula something easier to work with. That's what we're doing. And we will get there. So help me out, what'd you get? Yeah, you'll get minus mu x, minus mu x, so I get minus two u x, and then of course I get plus mu squared. Right, so so far, let me take this up here. I'll write this up here. I warned you guys. And again, we're still deriving stuff. You never have to do anything I'm doing right now. You never got to do it yourself. I just want to show you where things come from. So far, we've gotten this to the point where I can put this in place of this. Is that cool? Now, what would I do? What would I do to keep simplifying? Multiply that in, right? Distribute that P stuff, right? Distribute the P of X. So what's the first thing I get be this? Is that cool? If you multiply this by this, don't you get that? Right? Minus blah, 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 blah. I don't care about the rest of it because we're not going to suddenly turn this into a summation algebra class. Now, I'm going to make this a bonus on the next test, but I'll show you. If you do this work, you eventually get here. Believe it or not, you eventually get all the extra shit here becomes this. Then again, I'll make it a bonus. If you do the work, you'll actually see it, right? So if I were you, I might try, if I have some time, I might try to do it so I'm ready for the bonus, it gets a couple points. But you all agree, does everybody agree, this is definitely the first thing we get when I distribute that, no question. And then I get other shit, and all the other shit, all the other shit, all the other shit, becomes that. 
So what does this formula need then, this next column to be? I need a sum, like I told you, this is gonna be this minus the square of the mean. Okay, so what do I need a column of? I need a column of those. Don't I need to add those up? Yes? How do I make a column of those? Well, I just freaking make a column of those. What I do is this, let me see if you guys are cool with this. What is x times x p of x? What is x times x p of x? x squared p of x is exactly what I want. So what I do is I take L1 times L3. x times x is x squared p of x. 1 times 0.12, 2 times 1.14, 3 times 0.9, 4 times 0 0.14, 0.04. I notice, all right, so a lot of stuff just that, right? And again, this is the work you're going to have to do. If I add those up, I get the number that I'm going to put right there. Does everybody agree? I mean, that's the sum of those goes right there. Like, by the way, this is a formula for the variance. So what do these add to be? 5.26, is that right? Who's going to help me? All right. Math boy job. Yeah, 5.26, pretty sure. So then the variance is going to be 5.26. This whole thing is 5.26 because I added those up. Minus the mean, 2.2. Right, when you add those up, you get the mean, 2.2 squared. That's the variance. Somebody help me out. So then, all right, we got it back here. 4.84, 4.84, so that's 0. 0.5, 0. 0.42, yeah. So then the, the standard deviation is going to be the square root of that, which is roughly 0. 0.638. I don't know. Six anything else. What is it? 648. Holy shit. All right. It's pretty, that's not bad. 648. Okay, everybody can double check. Now, why would you say the standard deviation is big? 0.648, it's pretty freaking small. Why does it make sense? 57 of our data points, 57% of our data points are twos. And the average was 2.2. So isn't most of our data 0.2 away from the average? You guys see that? You guys see that? No, I don't see a damn thing, Jeff, man. The mean is 2.2, yes? Oh, this is just this is just throwing shit in the calculator, right? Yeah, no, I somehow got nothing. When you did this step, I got that, and then I got 0.42, and then I somehow lost it right after 4.2. Oh, just take a square root, right? I did. I got 0.1764. Oh, you squared. Take a square root. You squared. Wow. Yeah. Okay. This is a weird insult. You squared. Um. Now coming back to this, the mean is 2.2. Most of our data is twos. Most of our data is 0.2 away from the mean. Standard deviation measures how far the data gets on average. So this points of frame makes complete sense. Some of our data is fours, some are threes, some are ones. Most are twos. So the standard deviation should be freaking small as shit, yes? It makes sense. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. So what is the problem going to look like? I'm going to give you x's and p of x's. I have to give you both because that's the complete data set. You make this column, add them up, that's the mean. You make this column, add them up, that's the number you throw into the formula for the standard deviation. Okay, all right. All right. Some of you guys are falling asleep. Let me give you something to do. Um, let me see, is there anything I forgot? 
one thing, well, so, not really. I think I said this. Moving forward at the moment, we're going to define unusual to start two steps away from the mean. Unusual is going to start two steps away from the mean. So, for example, uh, let me give you a nice concrete example of what I'm talking about. The average height of men, 69 inches, the standard deviation is 2.8 from what I remember. So go with me for real quick, 69, what's one step up? That'd be 71.8, is that cool? Two steps up, 74.6. 74.6 is six foot three almost. Is that cool? Okay. Uh, if I go one step down, that would be 66.2. If I go two steps down, that would be, I don't know, 63 point something. Four? Thank you. That's five foot three, roughly, and this is six foot three, roughly. So this is where most, and this is from American men again, most American men are somewhere between five foot three and six foot three. Would you agree with that from your observations in your life? If I saw somebody who was six foot five, would that be relatively unusual? Yes, totally. I like it. Maybe, maybe. Anybody here six foot five? You know, like, yeah. in spirit, man, we talk. I love it. Um, <laughs> I'm exactly the average height, so I played a lot of basketball when I was younger, so I got a lot of uh, motivation from people like Spud Webb. Anybody know Spud Webb? Uh, it was five foot three, I believe. When he played in the NBA? And I'll stop. I'll stop. A really good fadeaway shot. Does it have to? Yes? I would say, according to my father's passport, he is six foot five and a half. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the passport thinks that's All right. Anyway, all right. So we're going to call unusual anything that's outside of two standard deviations. Why does it make sense? What percentage is in here? Because heights are normally distributed. What percentage of American men are between five foot three and six foot three? 95 percent. Okay, I like it. So unusual starts two standard deviations away. So what would be unusual here? The mean is 2.2. Standard deviation was 0.648. So if I go two steps up, it's like 1.3. So that's almost 3.5. And if I go two steps down, uh, that's about point, oh God, nine, I think. So four is unusual in this data set. And that makes sense. What percent of our data was four? One percent. So, you know, kind of jives with what we see. Okay, okay. So let me give you this. Let me finally shut the hell up. So what I've done, I've done this before. One side of this paper is a completely worked out problem, right? And the other side is the problem I want you to work on. By the way, we just did section 401 and 14. 401 is the mean, 42 is the standard deviation. So we just knocked out two sections. Yes, so if you need to borrow a calculator, let me get back up there. Make sure it turns on. Make sure it's got battery. Oh, you got a new one. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna use the key. Sure. Sweet. Go for Joy right in a minute. So, again, one side is completely worked out. And by the way, I didn't say this, but when I constructed this, Guys, when I made these up, what did I have to be careful happened? They added up to one. Yeah, they all have to add up to one. And thankfully they do now that I'm looking back at it, right? Also, every probability has to be between, what's the lowest it could be? What's the lowest a probability can be? Zero. Zero. What's the highest it could be? One. one. There you go. So when I ask you, 
Is this a valid probability distribution? Two things. They all add to one, and all the probabilities are between zero and one. You check that. Okay. So that's what I got. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There. Is that what you guys got? Okay. So on a test or a quiz, you would copy those down onto your paper. So watch this, it's kind of cool. I, I, what do I need the sums of? Which lists? All right, so let me show you a shortcut. Let me show you the old way we used to do this. If I hit second mode to quit, if I go to second stat, math, sum, remember this? L3, right? And then you just hit second enter, go back and make it L4 so you don't have to go through all those freaking menus again, right? So everybody see that we got the sums? Yes, we got the sums. Now just let me show you one neat little thing. Let me write those down, <laughs> 45. 0.89. Are those the numbers you guys got? 2410? 0.89. 0.89? Sweet. 0.89 is just everywhere. Now, real quick, this doesn't mean anything. Watch this, just in case. If I hit stat, calc, two var stats, L3, L4, see how the sum of the, they calls two variable stats, right? One variable is x, the other one is going to be y, just like in algebra. So the sum of the first list I put in is 45.99. The sum of the second list, see that? 2410.89. Come on. So it's a little bit quicker. All these other numbers don't mean shit because all I need is the sums, yes? You can do it either way you want to. I don't know. All we got, we just got to get the sum somehow. Okay. Um, all right. So why is this a valid probability version? Two things. Why is this valid? I love it. The probabilities, which is also known as the relative frequency. I love it. So the probabilities add up to be one. You could also answer that in English, right? You don't have to answer it in mathish like I did over here. When you have the probabilities, you get one, or you can write it in mathish. I can speak both languages. And the probabilities are all between. Zero and one. I love it. Now, hopefully it's pretty straightforward. If I'm in some situation, I add up all the probabilities. I've got to make one. If I included all the probabilities, it's got to be one, 100%. Now, when we made relative frequency histograms, did the relative frequencies always add up to be one? No. What could they give me an example of what they could add up to be? And it would be okay. So we remember, why would the probabilities, why would the frequencies not add, because you rounded, right? We, we definitely rounded sometimes. So maybe they would add to be 0.999 or, or 1.002 or something, right? 
Are you guys at all with me? Yes, of course. Yeah, of course. Because when you round things, you could randomly round more things up than you did down. I love it. So, on the next test, I will have a problem, bless you, where the probabilities add up to be like 0.999 or 1.001, right? And then you have to say, the probabilities add up to be approximately one. Yeah, actually check, do you understand? Because I get people, they just sort of put that down, oh, so that's what I do, I just say this. No, check, actually check it. And I'm telling you right now, it's not gonna be one. I'm gonna make it one of these things, right? So then you say, the sum of it is this, which is close enough, which is approximately one. Because it's supposed to be one. Okay, I'll stop. Just want to give you a little. Oh, so now you know two things on the next test. What's the other thing they're gonna? What's the other question that's gonna be on the next test? Oh. Every test. What's the zero done? Yeah, yeah. I didn't quite get 100% of everybody get that problem right. I, can't I didn't calculate the percentage, but it wasn't where I wanted it to be. But it's okay. All right. Um, part B. What's the probability that we pick a kid who thinks they'll be at least 25 when they retire? How'd you get that? From the x times px. Oh! Which column up here tells me probabilities? Yeah. At least 25 years old. Yeah, add these up. Or I could do 1 minus 0.04, yes. What do these all add up to be? No, I mean all of them. They all have to be 1, right? So what are these added to be? 1 minus 0.04. If all of it adds up to be 1, 1 minus 1 piece is the other chunk. Or you just add it, it doesn't matter. Either way you do it, you get 0.96. By the way, who are these kids, by the way? <laughs> these are the kids that are like, I'm going to be Xander Hall. I'm going to be... What's his name? Cutie Pie. I'm going to be... I don't know. Is he still doing shit? I, I don't pay attention enough. Some big YouTube whatever, or whatever the next thing is. <laughs> All right? I, I, I'll stop. Like, that's going to be me. And like, no, it ain't good. Yeah. Now, we've already done the work for the mean. What's the mean? Can you just read it off to me? Yeah. So when I add up that XP of X list, I get the mean. We did the work why that's true earlier, and now it's just, you got a formula, you can do it. What is this piece right there? Just this piece right there. That's 2410.89, right? That's the sum of these things. So that's 2410.89 minus the mean... And the biggest mistake I see is people forget to square this. Well, so if I do that, I'll get a number. What does that number represent? Variance. The variance. I love it. So I get 304.9979. Okay, I like it. By the way, this data is pretty far spread out, yes? Most of the data seems to be uh, down here, but also up here. So I expect the standard deviation to be kind of big. If I was going to take a guess just looking at this, I expect to be around 20-something, right? Just just seeing how things are spread out. So let's see what do we get when we do the square root. Jeff, the square root of that, I get 17.464. So the average was 46, roughly, and on average, the ages reported got 17.464 away from that. Okay, I lock it. Let me stop for a minute. 
Okay. These poor people here, these 2% that said 100, oh man. Yeah. By the way, our life expectancy went down, obviously, it makes sense. It went down during the recession in the late 2000s, and it went down, of course, over the pandemic. Um, but it's going to start going back up again, so someday the retirement age will be 100, I'm sure, barring anything else happening. So Part D should sound very familiar. Yes? We had this kind of problem on the test on some of your stuff. Put the mean in the middle. If I go up one step and down one step, where do I end up? So if I go up one step, every step is this big, yes? If I go down one step, 28.4358. Right, we've done this before. This is The reason I make you do this is it's a concrete example of the theory about what percentage would be within one. So if this is normal, I would expect about 68%. I could go actually see what this is. What data points did we just catch between there? What ages did we just catch? We didn't catch 21 or 25. What ages did we catch? 40s. Yeah, what's in there? 40s are in there. And 50s. Everybody else is outside of there. What percentage of the data is 40s? What percentage of the data is 40? 23%. So we got 23% from the 40s plus... What percentage of the data? What percentage of the data? Oh my God! What's in here? Liquid crap. Strong, whatever it's. Um, <clears throat> Whoa! What percentage of the data is fifties? Eighteen percent. So, what percentage did we catch? What? Twenty three plus eighteen. 41%. I like it. Now, obviously, is the highest bar in the middle of this data? Where would the highest bar be? <clears throat> way up here, right? So this is, I knew it wasn't normal, and this is just sort of another way to see that it's not normal. It's nowhere near 68%. Okay, maybe. What time we got? We'll take a break here in a minute. Yes. Uh, are you said the highest bar, or you're not talking about the range of the box of the So what defines the height of a bar if I made oh, a histogram? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. So that would be the relative frequency. I love it. I thought you meant like, uh, like we were doing. Oh, the length of it. There, so I thought you were doing <coughs> the highest. Like, oh. Would be a hundred. No. Okay. So look at part E. Part E is interesting. It's a two-step problem. Can you tell me what percentage of the kids think they're going to retire before 65? Yeah, if you add these up, right, before 65, yep. you get 69%. Yep. All right, that's 69%, but I want to know how many kids think that. I didn't say what percentage think that. I want to know how many. Well, how many kids were there total? 1,200. And what percentage of them? 69%. So if I do 69% of 1,200, I got 136. Seems a little low because 50% of 1,200 is 600. 828. 828, yeah. Sounds better. Okay, maybe. So I was a little two stepper. All right, let's do this. You guys desperately need a break. I could tell. Uh, Come back, I don't know. Uh, what time are you going to come back? 10.35? We'll do a 20 minute. Come back 10.35 and we'll pick it back up there. We just did section four, one and four, two. Knocked them out.